Greetings to you from wherever you're watching us tonight. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Let me give you a quick rundown of what to expect on the show tonight while I wait for my partner, Austin Okona Akman, to join in. And tonight we'll be talking about uh, the Africa Ham Wrestling Championship that was held in Lagos. We will also uh, talk about the Team Nigeria uh, for the Common. Commonwealth Games. We'll talk about um, them as well. We'll talk about the WAFCON. That's the Women's Africa Cup of Nations. As we speak, Nigeria's Super Falcons up against the Chipolo Polo of Zambia. They are battling for the bronze in the third place match. We will keep you posted on all that is going on in Casablanca with regards that game. We'll talk football transfers on the show, and we will properly digest the CAF awards yesterday where we're about to leave. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, winners were emerging, and we didn't have much time uh, to talk about it. So we'll do that for you on the show tonight, and we will also still continue uh, to take a look at Rivers United. Immediate reactions from winning the championship and some of the players I've been talking will give all of that to you. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy what we have on offer tonight. It's going to be a swell ride. Also, Kona Akman is ready, and he joins in now. Well, great to see you, and of course, everyone joining us from different parts of the world. Always a delight to be on the show, still an action part of the sport, you know? Good luck to the Falcons. I wish them all the best because they deserve to leave Morocco with something. You talked about arm wrestling. That's an interesting one because I know the guys involved with arm wrestling in Nigeria have been doing a lot of work in the background. So I'm super excited to see that and they finally have it going right there in Nigeria. So uh, I'm top of charge. Super ready for tonight here. All right. At some point, we also expect our man. Alfredo Kulikwe to join in as we take this ride together uh, to talk about the interesting things happening in the world of sports. While we also wait for him to get ready, also let's set the ball rolling. Let's talk about Team Nigeria. They're coming to your end very soon, preparing for uh, the Commonwealth Games and uh, what was a farewell uh, reception from the sports ministry uh, today. Uh, uh, Sonny Dari, the Minister for Youth and Sports, uh, of course, a it, with the team, uh, saying that Team Nigeria is fit and ready and will be very competitive at the 2022 Commonwealth Games starting in Birmingham, uh, United Kingdom next week. Is giving that uh, assurance. The minister said the athletes are fit and ready uh, for the games uh, because the past few months have been have sharpened and toughened them for the challenges ahead. Uh, like I said earlier, he was speaking during a farewell dinner organized for Team Nigeria by the British High Commissioner to uh, Nigeria, that's Katrina Lang, uh, at her residence in Abuja. So, I mean, Austin, that sets uh, the tone for, I mean, what we expect to be a very good performance from Team Nigeria at the Commonwealth Games. Right, so that the, the British High Commissioner saying, look, the objective of the game is unity, um, is you know, to bind all Commonwealth countries together, and a good way to do that is through sports. She, the Minister of the Athletes, giving us the peace sign. That's the High Commissioner right there to the athletes. So now that the High Commissioner has shown the way in Nigeria, they will come to London, probably land in London first, get to you know. Uh, more love from the Nigeria house before they go to Birmingham. Or the Nigeria house will take the love, meet them right there in Birmingham. But it is what it is to Nigeria ready for the Commonwealth Games. This one here, I mean, you know, we, we love it at the Commonwealth Games. We shine right. here, we win. We use this to show that Nigeria is truly indeed a country you must respect that sport. And I want to really, you know, see what they can do with the Commonwealth Games coming from what happened at the Tokyo Olympics. Now they've gone to the World Championship, then the Commonwealth Games. So whatever performance you get here can serve as long-term preparation for the Paris 2024 Olympics. So uh, we can't wait to have them come to the United Kingdom Premium to decide on them. Uh, we'll have some support. All right. So uh, let's bring in Alfred Koligbe. 
uh, uh, this lovely uh, Friday evening. Greetings to you, Alfred. Uh, thanks for uh, f always finding time uh, to do this with us every Friday. And of course, you heard us talking about Team Nigeria, uh, the farewell party, and of course, the comments uh, the sports minister made at the farewell party he says Team Nigeria is fit and ready to go. Events in the recent past has sharpened and toughened the team. Well, uh, good evening, uh, Yami. Uh, good evening, Austin. Uh, delighted to be here, as always. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, the Commonwealth Games has always been a good hunting ground for um, Nigeria in time past, one of the strongest uh, countries of the Commonwealth in terms of um, the shared size that we have, the potentials uh, that sometimes we struggle to, to view. But when it comes to, we have a very rich history in the Commonwealth Games. Um, We've had from the days uh, way back of uh, the the Nigerians of this one. Commonwealth has always been um, um, what's his name? the one that won gold in the high job in first Um We've always had a very very rich history in the games. And I think um, the sports minister understands uh, this also. Um, we might not be um, all guns blazing at the World Championship, but hey, when it comes to the Commonwealth of uh, Commonwealth Games. Has always been a good hunting ground, and it's good that um, um, Gavala is in all the support. Um, I hope and I pray that uh, uh, some of the things that you know characterize our participation at um, international games does not uh, wear its ugly head in, in this one. Let's go there, uh, compete like other nations. Let's leave our negativities uh, out there. And some of the things that administratively we should have done that we don't get to do. And we hear stories. They come out, the, the, uh, the event was not fixed yesterday or in the last two days. Uh, so let nobody come to tell us that, yes, actually approval has uh, come, but no release yet, no cash back into the approval. Uh, if you know what you need to do uh, to avoid all of those stories and uh, the, the negative vibes that come from our participation at international games in terms of our players' celebration or alliances and the rest of them. I, I hope it doesn't happen again. I pray it doesn't happen again. But um, beyond that, we're looking forward to, to a good outing. We've had, we have a long list of uh, those who are Commonwealth champions, uh, those who have done well in the game. And this one will be no exception. So we're looking forward with great expectations of this one. Yeah, looking forward um, <clears throat> with uh, great expectations to uh, the Commonwealth Games. And hopefully we'll do well. And I do agree with you all the things, the negative headlines, hopefully we won't get to see uh, them uh, when we compete at the Commonwealth Games because some of those things are self-inflicted. All right, guys, let's uh, move on on the show. There's a lot of ground to cover. If there's anything else left on the Commonwealth Games, we will revert. But let's talk about uh, ham wrestling uh, and talk about, uh, of course, the 11th edition of the African Arm Wrestling Championship that was held uh, at the indoor hall of the National Stadium in Surulere, uh, Lagos. Nigeria emerged winners of that 11th uh, edition. Nigeria finished top of the medal table with 76 medals, comprising of 27 gold, 27 silver, and 22 bronze. Of course, Nigeria earned uh, a massive 630 points to become overall best in performance and in coordination. And so, Egypt 22nd with 24 gold medals and 248 points, while Ghana came third with 18 gold, 22 silver and 5 bronze, with a total of 383 points. The next edition uh, will be held in Accra, Ghana, that will be next year, 2023. Uh, I want you to enjoy some of the uh, highlights. I mean, just see, uh, uh, of course, the fine details of arm wrestling, uh, the techniques and some of the things uh, that, you know, it's acceptable. Then we take some reactions just immediately after that. the highlights 
guys, before we take um, the track, let, let, let's just, I mean, talk about this. I mean, <laughs> let me come to you, Austin. We, we, we did this without the rules when we were kids, and we enjoyed it. Yeah. But this, yeah. at the highest level, it's a game that can earn you money, earn you respect, earn you a lot of things. I mean, just look at these guys perfecting the heart of arm wrestling. Uh, and I'm very sure some of the things we thought we knew then uh, will, will probably be wrong when we get to see uh, the real rules of this game. I know, yeah, me and and for me, I love it that Nigeria is is you know leading the way in this sort of sports with our population and the talents that we have in Nigeria. Even if we struggle in some sports, it shouldn't be you know things like this, particularly one that requires a lot of techniques, intelligence, mental strength. You know, it's the eleventh edition. And Nigeria has been on, on the forefront towards, you know, the development of arm wrestling. And I'm glad to see that Nigeria emerged champions uh, this edition right there in Lagos. Uh, and, lo and looking at it and, and the joy on the faces of these guys, you could tell that, you know, sports is, is a good platform to, you know, to get youth busy, you know, to engage them, to empower them, to provide opportunities. Those are arm wrestlers from Bene Republic. Some of them probably have not left the shores of Bene, but you know, through sports, as arm wrestling, you know, they get to come to uh, to Nigeria to compete. Same thing with the Nigerian athletes. You could see some of the highlights we saw that they were happy, you know, after winning, and that's a confirmation of it right there. Uh, the team with the trophy. I'm sure they'll be getting ready for Ghana already. Someone will say it's arm wrestling. So what's the big deal? It's, it's, it's big deal. Yesterday we we're talking about extreme sports. Extreme sports very big in the United States of America. People take skateboarding to the next level, use it to improve their lives. So these are the sort of things we should be doing. Find ways that we can dominate, you know, different uh, aspects of sports. And I love this story because I know the work that Nigeria did in, for the development of arm wrestling in Nigeria. All right, I, Alfred, I, I have to get your thoughts on this one. I mean, very unique sports, enjoyable. Um, there's a lot of technique involved as well. There is, and, and, and that's what makes it very interesting. I, I mean, for individual sports like this, what it does is that, that um, it means that for somebody who desires improvement, who desires to... Um, want to get something from the sport, you can actually put in the work, put in the effort. Um, there's a federation in place now. Um, if you have federation is not, uh, not in place, the rules have hosted the African uh, championships. So what it means is that you have to take it out. It's not a question of when we have the National Sports Festival. Uh, which when you have to take it out there, put it in our faces, take it to club, uh, to pubs, to clubs, to make it popular, take it to schools. Uh, so that people can understand the rules of how to engage in it. And when people begin to see the potentials that he has um, and the opportunities that he presents, I, I mean, for any sport to grow, you have to grow the, those at the base, which is the grassroots. You have to get so many people into the sports at a very, very young age. And that, I think that should be the, um, the template for growth for the association and, and the popularity for it. I mean, football is very popular because every street corner, everywhere, everywhere you play football, it's in our faces. We see it on TV, people glamorize us. So we just have to make the sport that popular, take it to Brazil, take it to schools. Um, the earlier, the better. That's what they say in sport. So, um, so that it's that uh, popular. I mean, for somebody who has attended the African Championship, if you do well, who says you can't attend the World, Champ uh, the World Championship? Of arm, of arm wrestling. So it, it, it's good. The possibilities are and the potentials are, are endless. So it's something that we really need to, to to encourage. And I'm happy that Nigeria is hosting this one. You know, sometimes when you hear the African Championships and Hamburg the other day, they are going to Egypt. This week they are going to Tunisia. The other one, they are going to Ghana. You ask yourself, how many events you know, do we have in Nigeria, the so-called African Championships that we have? How many do we really get to host? So this one has come here. Yeah, we'll let's let's celebrate it, and I think it, the, the sport needs all the encouragement it can get. All right, it does need all the encouragement uh, it can get. All right, let's uh, take some reactions. We'll come back for more sports tonight. I want it 
in the super heavyweight uh, category, female. And uh, I, I think I deserved it, yeah, because I trained very well for the competition, yes. Yeah. Um, I think I'm one of the uh, athletes that have the zeal, you know. I try, I spent I spend more than 10 hours in the gym. I spend five hours in the morning and five hours in the evening. So I don't think any female athlete can beat that, yeah, in Nigeria. The only thing I need is for the government or whoever is in charge to support us with standard training facilities. That is all we need. Our mindsets are ready. Everything about us is ready, except we don't have what it takes to train. We train with dumbbells, whereas our opponents train with the, the pulley ropes and everything that is meant for arm wrestling. But we go and we train with bodybuilders, which is not what we need. We need standard training facilities so that we can be able to beat them, because it's not easy. Yeah, there's, there's some equipment meant for arm wrestling alone. That is what we need in Nigeria. Yes, because as you can see, our athletes here, we don't have a, a, a team. These are some uh, volleyballers, uh, footballers that you gathered here. But we need to have an arm wrestling team that will always go, to, we, and they'll be always trained for the competition. Uh, you know, I feel amazing. I want to say thanks for everyone in my team, my coach, family, friends, uh, my supporters in Egypt. Okay, I did a great job. Okay, uh, my father, Nasi Yusuf. He's my own coach, he uh, worked uh, very much for me. Okay, uh, and here it is. I get the title, I'm African champion. I prepared very, very well for the competition. I won uh, both hands. Okay, left and right, I uh, get gold. So uh, it's amazing. It's very, very amazing for me, sure. All right, so a lot of happy, uh, happy faces. Some of them won. Uh, I mean, one of them talking about winning with both hands. Uh, I mean, I, I just, I just love this. And it, it's also awesome. it's amazing how some of the things that, I mean, we do for leisure. Some of the things that were fun games when we were growing up. You now see there are bona fide games that could, bona fide sport events that could hand you money, hand you popularity, hand you a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Things that, I mean, nobody taught you, but just somehow you knew how to do those things. Mm -hmm. That's right. It tells you the power of sports and um, its acceptability. Uh, back in the day, we just we just plan, get on a bike and circle. Yeah. Now it's big business, you know. Uh, for some persons who are involved in martial arts, it's just to learn taekwondo or karate. But people use it to go to the Olympics now and win big money, you know. So I totally agree with you, with, particularly with arm wrestling. That's why I said nobody should just come and say, ah, oh, come on, what kind of sport is this? Or oh, they are just, you know, pulling arms together. You listen to, to the female arm wrestler. She, she's calling for support. And this is what we always get. She said they've got the mindset, so mentally they are ready to compete. But let me see, faulty preparation. She said they are training as bodybuilders. They are training with the equipment that the bodybuilders use, that they have their own infrastructure, and that is missing. These are, these are the little, little things you do. You see, and we have this faulty setup and we still go to win. The guy from Egypt, the way he spoke, you can tell that he was properly ready for this competition. Sure, and, sure. And, and he showed up in his performance. So um, I wonder where this one will get attention because it's arm wrestling. If footballers are complaining of, of unpaid allowances and bonus, I'm just wondering who's going to listen to arm wrestlers. But <laughs> these are the things that we need to change. We need to understand that in any way you can empower young persons you need to take it. So, I mean, let's go on a break. Um, uh, that was a good one from Arm Wrestling. Sports Tonight on Channels Television. We'll go on this quick break now. When we come back, last night we mentioned the Betsy Obaseki Cup. We're getting ready for the second edition. What's on offer this time? We'll tell you. Don't go anywhere. Stay. <laughs> Welcome back. It's post tonight on channels, television. You can be part of the show. Uh, send us an email or uh, talk to us via Twitter. On Twitter, watch channels on the sports or send us an email to sports tonight at channels tv.com. What's going on in your 
interesting, exciting. One has been in action packed for us, but that you want us to talk about. So talk to us. We will find time to, you know, get into that conversation with you. I mentioned the Betsy of Bad Circuit Cup. We talked about it last night. We didn't have enough time to get into it properly. We're getting ready for the second edition. The organizers have said it will take place on September the 7th and run till the 17th. This is the second edition. The first edition got us talking. It's women's football, by the way. And the uh, the first lady of Edo State, that's all right there, Our Excellency, uh, Mrs. Betsy Obaseki, she has said she wants to use this competition to keep touching the lives of young girls positively. And we had her on the show uh, for the first edition, and she promised that this won't stop. Supported by the Deputy Governor, right there, Philip Shaibu. He loves sports. He is, in fact, everything sports in Edo State. And because of what they did um, last year, uh, Alfred, this competition got international recognition. The deputy governor was invited to come to Zurich by FIFA. That means the international community they are watching. And I love the fact that this year, they've even said it will be better. Good one for women's football, Alfred. Excellent, excellent addition to the development stride when it comes to women's um, women's football. Because um, whether you like it or not, um, competitions, you know, enhances you know the team, enhances the setup, and so for women, and for so for women's football, um, it's a good addition to their calendar. I think they're enjoying a lot of support in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the support, in terms of um, playing competitions. So. Uh, it will be nice to see how it turns out this year. I mean, we are no longer African champions, and that's something to worry about. So for national, those in charge of national team sets up, this is where to go to, to um, see if they will have players that will bring into the pool, especially in the national team set up. And uh, I mean, it's all about youth and, you know, youth and, uh, and, and football. And the more we get more youthful players into our national team set up, the better for everybody. So um it, it's a good one i think competitions like this should be encouraged the more the merrier because um support they say can never be too much the more we get things like this to do place and the women's league is also the thank god that uh, the second tier of the women's uh, league is also um almost every strata in, in the game so the competition like this kind of you know enhances whatever the league or um those who are running yeah uh the league at that level is doing so it, it's good and i think competitions like this need to, need to be encouraged and we encourage more people there are so many first ladies uh, what i what i did with all of the things that they i mean i mean it, football is something that for as well for women who play it mm -hmm. um it not only improves the lives of the family some of them this is the passport that they have to run away from poverty. So we need this kind of competition. We need this kind of platform for players to come through. And I, and I hope that uh, those who run our football will seize the opportunity to really see how they can, you know, populate that national team set up, get young, fresh legs to uh, to come into the set up. Yeah. If we are not lacking talent, I think it's scouting is the problem. All right. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to add to everything that you have said. Let's listen to uh, the convener uh, explain uh, the motivation behind uh, this event and what uh, specific reasons uh, for uh, this year's event and what uh, they hope to achieve. The proposed dates for this year's tournaments would be the 7th through to the 17th of September. 2022. So we're going to have a tournament of about 10 to 11 days, um, spanning a period of 10 to 11 days. In our usual tradition of hosting this tournament around um, a focal issue pertaining to the girl child or the female gender in Edo states, last year's tournament had the um, what we focused on was on um, promoting the girl child. That was our caption. This year is going to be say no to drug abuse. This also happens to tie with the um, current project under consideration by the Nigerian Governor's Wives Forum. Um, a few years ago, in 2020, we launched a coalition of the Governor's Wives 
um, to tackle the issue of the problem of gender-based violence in our country. And we have recorded huge successes in that, with that fight. So we decided a few weeks ago, a few months ago, to take on another project, us governor's wives. Incidentally, it happens to be to tackle the problem of drug abuse in our country, especially as it affects women and children. One of the major uh, focus of FIFA in the next five years is promotion of female soccer. And I was impressed when competitions like this were mentioned and Af when we came to Africa, competitions like this were mentioned and I was like, really? And investigating further, I discovered that actually it was first lady they were supposed to invite, but they invited <laughs> me because some of the things that led to my invitation was what we are doing in uh, dealing with issue of female involvement in sports. And when I got there, I was like, ah, it's first lady will have been here because the tournament was one of those marks that we got. Today, I'm happy and excited that just like we promised last year, it was not a one-off event. All right, uh, Philip Shaibu, uh, Deputy Governor uh, of Edo State. He also listened to the wife of uh, the Governor of Edo State, Bessie Obasiki, uh, explaining uh, everything that needs to be known about that competition. And uh, thankfully, it's not a one-off. We asked that question uh, when she made an appearance on the show, and we're very happy to note that it is continuing. All right, let's move on on the show. A lot of ground to uh, cover. Let's take you to Casablanca for a uh, situation report. That game currently going on, the third place game uh, between Nigeria and Zambia. 27 minutes of foot. Uh, as a matter of fact, 28 minutes of football played, and it is goalless. Uh, third place. Losers final uh, they call it. None of us thought Nigeria was going to be in this situation. It is what it is, and uh, we have to live with it. So it is live. First half, tw about 29 minutes on the clock right about now. Let me just quickly uh, find you the floor uh, to Austin. You know, yesterday we were uh, talking about, uh, I mean, some of our colleagues uh, in, uh, you know, on this beat, talking about how the assessment of the Super Falcons uh, performance. Uh, but, but let me just quickly get Alfred's uh, thoughts before I yield the floor to uh, Austin. I mean, Alfred, ten, let's just say uh, roughly 30 yeah. minutes. What, what are you expecting? The expectations are, my expectations are that the Falcons will be better. Been a lot better. I'm, I'm looking at the screen just behind me here. The Zambians are taking the lead. Um, they lead by wow. a goal to nil. Um, uh, wow. Interesting stuff. The, the Falcons had the possession. They were huffing and puffing, but they were not troubling, troubling the Zambians. One counter attack, and they just left us uh, exposed. They were left uh, right full back for the Falcons. Um, just cut open there, and they couldn't deal with it. Uh, it is what it is, like you said. The Zambians lead this one, one, one nil first half. Wow. Alfred giving us a situational report. Austin, I mean, what can we say? Uh, we're about to listen to what some of our colleagues have said about the Super Falcons. Just while we were talking, the goal came in. Yeah, I was just even trying to get more updates, you know. Uh, I was hoping you were not going to come to me because that goal was just scored right you know, before Alfred started speaking. So I was like, okay, Alfred, we... We drop, we drop the surprise. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm still proud of the Super Falcons all day, every day. You know, it, it, we need to, you know, bring down our expectations a bit, uh, uh, particularly knowing that this team they've come a long way and now they are the team to beat. But why I want them to come out of Morocco with something is so that their their morale will not drop particularly in getting ready for the World Cup. Um, but Zambia and what they've done at this competition also, they want to prove a point. And if they can win this game, they know it to do so much for the development of the women's game in their country. So it's 1-0 in favor of, of Zambia. But I trust the Super Falcons will come back into this one. The 20th minute, Ngozi Okobi gave a fine pass to Chebi, but Chebi couldn't, you know, 
are converting to goal. And then Zambia got their chance and went on to score. That's football for you. Uh, let's not also forget that there was a subtle agenda uh, right there at the African Women's Cup of Nations. Nobody would tell me that they are not asking questions as regards the officiating in that game between Nigeria and Morocco, but it is what it is. That's football, but we have to mention it, you know, so um, it can get to the Confederation of African Football and we'll find a way to start, you know, taking away all these things that, uh, that removes the shine from the actual play. Two red cards that are questionable, uh, an offense for the, for the Moroccans that, that was looked away, you know, so... All of those things, yeah, I mean, that doesn't make it look so good for uh, for the women's game. But right now, it's Zambia 1, Nigeria 0. Some sports journalists in Nigeria, they reacted. They expected the Super Falcons to go all the way, win a record 10th WAFCON title. It didn't happen. Let's listen to them. Yeah, um, they did their best. But overall, overall, the team didn't play as a cohesive unit. They were not the Falcons, which we all know, dominant in play and, of course, exude confidence. But it's it's a work in progress, and I hope that um, the challenges they faced would uh, be surmounted ahead of the World Cup. It wasn't a really, really bad tournament, to say, but not the, not the kind of performance we expect our own uh, darling Falcons uh, to churn out in a major tournament like that. Uh, it would have been great, you know, uh, having the title for a tenth time. Nine times success story. I thought if we we're going to crash out, it shouldn't be now. And in Africa, I do not really see anybody that should have disturbed Nigeria. But as it is now, it has turned out that South Africa, it has turned out that Morocco, those are new trends for Nigerian football. I've been privileged to know Nigerian women football in the early 90s. As far as uh, you know, when we went to China 91, the FIFA Women's World Cup, I thought our problem was going to be Holland, going to be the Netherlands, going to be uh, South Korea and the rest of them, and even Japan. But uh, it has, uh, has become bad now that even in Africa, South Africa, we are not as afraid of them. We are not afraid of uh, Morocco. I don't want to, I'm not in that group of people saying that the Super Falcons lost gallantly. It was not a gallant loss. It was a team that was technically deficient. I would say Holland needs to be on deck. We need to be more proactive. We need to be more tactical. We need to be more disciplined. And we need to be more focused. Uh, quite often, when you look at the bandwagon, once you make it past the rounds, you start seeing officials barraging this. Whether it is male football, whether it is female football, it's the same thing that keeps happening. That distraction will always get off the mark. When you create such distraction for any of our athletes, they don't focus again. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, some sports journalists reacting to the Super Falcons' um, failure to win a record 10th WAFCON title. So, and Raymond Aquarere, Raymond, I know you so well, you can't even kick a ball. I hear you talk about all of this, 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 this so uh, <laughs> I know some of them, Alfred, they, when we play this one cup, they can't even come out to lift their boots. Well, that's on a lighter note, but Alfred, yes, some persons are disappointed, and I think they have a right to be. No, no, I mean, I mean, apart from the, the joke, we have to situate the um, this, this competition. Uh, I think the problem, and Raymond mentioned it there, there's technical deficiency. Um, we've seen other teams that we play. We saw how they are set up. Properly coached teams, you know the way they play. They are deliberate. It's not a question of, you're like, it's happening against Zambia now. We have the possession, but truth be told, we do little or nothing with the ball in our possession. And when the Zambians get, the Zambians were just, the tactics was sit back, wait for us to come. Try get us on the counter, and exactly what they did, they got the goal. So, uh, uh, like I said, for Randy Waldrum, the minimum requirement to coach the Nigerian women's national team. We've seen coaches uh, take this job and win the African Women's Cup of Nations. We've seen um, mm. and for uh, uh, people their uh, names to mention from the Omagbemis to uh, Okodu to Izimian to Amabu. Uh, Just name them. Even Edwin Okon. Edwin Okon. Mm -hmm. you know, one, one, don't take the job. You win this championship. I mean, we are struggling now with the Zambians. We thought it was just the Moroccans and the South Africans. Now the, with the Zambians, we are also struggling. So it begs the question. It just shows that something. It just doesn't add up. It's not a question of having eleven girls. Uh, it's not a question of having eleven girls on the pitch. It's a question of mm. the kind of coaching we have. 
we have functional. Yeah, there's something not right from the bench happening to this uh, happening to these girls. All right. Uh, I mean, there's there's nothing to hard. Uh, you know, I, I promised myself I wasn't going to say anything because I don't want the emotions. But you should. You you should. You should. Yeah, me. Yeah, me. Yeah, me. Because yeah, we, we expect us so much, particularly from Randy Wardrop. Yeah, me. With the way the team played. Did one Ramsey Wardrum show that he even knows the team? He doesn't. He doesn't. I mean, it, it's easy to conclude. Now we said, okay, Monday gift came in in the last game. With the looks that she, she, she played, she left an impact. I'm shocked that Monday gift is still on the bench in a game like this. There you go. So where do you want to play? There you go. You know, look. If he, Onu Monu, gave everything she had, at some point you should even just rest her. You know, she she was drained <laughs> even mentally, and then we had in, enough to come. For instance, Odega brings Flair into the play. We saw it when she would play the other time, Rashida. We didn't even see Odega in a crucial game like, as that against Morocco. And you still pushed on if you're no to go play a penalty when she was already down and out. He didn't even know his team. He was guessing, and that was so wrong. And, and you see, Look, that, that's a problem. If if the people you said were not good enough would just blink their eyes and they're winning the Orcon, they're winning the Wafcon, and you bring somebody who is supposedly better, and the barest minimum was to go to the Wafcon and win. And you don't tell me about problems, because those other guys had problems, and they were winning. So I don't even More want to... problems. I don't want to hear anything about problems. So as much as I try to refrain from... I mean, it, it wasn't a decision that we are benefiting from because it looks like we have taken 10 steps backward. That, that's, that, to me, that's, that's the way it looks. And uh, whoever the guys were that took this decision probably should be covering their highs uh, somewhere. And, and look, the, it's, the bottom line still is, let's not, let's not try to cover up with what, what we're doing with the national teams. You bring a foreign coach if if you're not still developing your game, if you're not still doing all of those things, and a foreign coach will come and do that for you. It's just going to focus on the national team. And even the, the man you bring looks suspect, looks, I mean, without trying to sound harsh, tactically deficient. And well, God will help us. Uh, that, that's, that's the way. That, that, that's the that's way. Yeah, I'm smiling because... We finally got you to talk about it. There's no way we're not going to talk about it. So we can go with All right. Now. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about something that will bring smiles to our faces. It did yesterday, uh, the car for words. We, 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 I think we're just about a minute or two before we go on break, but let's see that list again and uh, talk about Super Z. Of course, I mean, entering the record books, first person uh, to win this five times. This is that Oshola, Africa's best female footballer and of course who can argue against Sadio Mane winning uh, that award. So let's see a list of the winners and uh, that's it on your screen. Uh, player of the year men, Sadio Mane currently plays for uh, Bayern but uh, he did all the things he did with Liverpool uh, and of course he also belongs to the Taranga Lions of Senegal. Player of the year women, Assistant Oshola Nigeria and FC Barcelona Inter Club Player of the year women Evelyn Badu, Ghana, and Sekondi Asaka's uh, ladies. And uh, also, she's uh, also switched to uh, a new club. Interclub Player of the Year, men. Uh, Mohamed El Shinewi, Egypt, and Halali. Young Player of the Year, women. You have Evelyn Badu uh, of uh, Ghana. Young Player of the Year for the men. Papa Metasa, Senegal, and Tottenham. All sport. Uh, these are the winners. Coach of the year, Desire Ellis, uh, for the women. Uh, she's from South Africa. Coach of the year, men, and Lil Cisse of Senegal. You can't argue against that. Club of the year, women, Mabalodi Sundowns of South Africa. So, uh, club of the year for the men with that athletic club of Morocco. National team of the year, no argument that has to be Senegal for the men. All right, so these are the categories. These are uh, the winners. We need to go on a break right about now. When we return from that break, uh, we talk a little about Rivers United and also take a look at football transfers and not forgetting what is currently going on 
in Casablanca. That third place game between the Super Falcons and the Chipolo Polo of Zambia. <laughs> All right, welcome back, uh, guys. Uh, let's quickly talk about Rivers uh, United. Uh, of course, uh, in their families, in their homes, wherever they are, I'm very sure is celebrations galore for those guys. Let's just quickly listen. Yesterday, we listened to quite uh, a few uh, of them, the pronouncement of the governor and all the goodies that came uh, with it. Let's just quickly uh, listen to the top scorer and the captain of the team. Let's talk about Rivers United. We listen to them. We talk about Rivers United and their aspirations on the continent. When the season started, because I set a target for myself before the season started. So with all with about all things are possible. So and I thank God that it came to reality. Well, well, firstly I would love to say that we have a, a sound coaches. We have Coach Stanley Guman, we call him AKA Capello. We have Coach Patao Shaw, we have Coach Shindoka, we have Coach Joe, Coach Zico. They are well, well, they are very, very sound coach. I would say they are the best coach in MPFL, even the world. So, so uh, as far as concerned, they are the best coach. Because they don't give us a tactical games. They don't give us, we are where we are position ourselves to finish in. Give us a, so many programs that will help a, a, a player. When a player is focused, you know that they are giving you a good program. I feel very pleased with myself. And uh, you know, when you dream and you hope for uh, something to achieve and it came to pass, uh, it, it is like a plus to me. I'm very happy about it. Yes, uh, it was a difficult and uh, a difficult uh, experience, and uh, it was not that easy. You know, we started from the Continental and uh, we were hoping to get to the group stage. From there, we'll pick it up there. But uh, things went wrong. We couldn't make it to the group stage. After then, uh, we feel so sad about it. Uh, believe you me, being we have this sport lovely governor who is so uh, passionate about victory and uh, we know what it takes when we deliver trophy to him. We know that he's going to be happy and he's going to get back to us. We are not happy when we lost in the continent. So we, we come together as one entity and uh, we have to resolve like we just have to go for the lift trophy. Uh, we don't just need anything like to go for the good trophy and we'll get it. Let's just go for it. And we started working hard and with focus and discipline, uh, we find ourselves here. All right. Uh, Chiroke Akuna is the top scorer. And of course, uh, Festus uh, Austin, the captain of uh, the team. Uh, let me go to Alfred. We're pressed for time. But I mean, your remarks uh, on, on what those uh, players. Uh, I've said, of course, they said there was a way to reward the governor who supported them all the way, was only fitting for them to win the title. Well, um, if Rivers United um, are looking to sign anybody now to their sport, what the governor have done, I don't think they need to um, say much to convince that player to join that $20,000 uh, trip to Madrid. Um, if they make it to the group stage of the cup, Champions League, they will double the money to forty thousand dollars. That's huge. Uh, you mean? And I was just um, earlier today on my show. I was using the street value to compute how much twenty thousand dollars comes to. It's about twelve. About um, the last count, um, today's rate is about over twelve million naira for each player uh, winning the uh, champ. That's huge. And I think uh, the only way to support our players, I, I, I mean. The years when Ayimba won this competition, they had some of the best players in Nigeria come play for them. I mean, if we have that, the likes of all the of this world that play the finals year in, year out, spent so much spent so much money to get the best players to play for them. I mean, if any of the teams in Nigeria can take it as a project, who will be amongst them? Not a question of um, you start the season and you ship out 15 players and bring in uh, 18 extra and all of that and no continuity and rest. Hopefully, Rivers United will focus this time around, not on the league, but focus on the continent. We need a team that will do very well, give us good representation on the continent. That's what the NPFL needs as, as a matter of urgency. So, good one for them. I I wish I played for Rivers United at this time. I know I, that's just <laughs> <a lot. laughs> I, I, I hope you know 
They are fans of Rangers and, in fact, players and technical crew of Rangers watching this show. I, I, said, I said play. I said play. Yeah, I know. But yeah, so why are you not wishing to play for Rangers? Our I mean, don't be slow when we play for Sharks. Okay. All right. We, are, we have less than a minute to uh, leave the studio. Uh, I mean, before we go, uh, Alex, Alexander Sinchenko has completed his move to Arsenal. That's the second player Arsenal is signing from Manchester City. And a lot of people are beginning to ask questions. I mean, uh, I mean, what, what can Arsenal achieve this season? Uh, your party shot before we go, um, Alfred, what does he bring to the table? Well, um, I mean, they would have worked with um, they would have worked with um, Ateta uh, in Manchester. So you would have seen them through and through. He knows what to add to the table for him. I think that's uh, good stuff for 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 us now. They need the players that have that skill, that resilience. But that that has always been their problem. Uh, you touch them and they start crumbling when things get so They need players who can really man up and play the game. Uh, if if they must do well this season. All right, I want to thank you for your time, Alfred Okolegbe, uh, today. We really wish you had more time, but we have to go. Thanks for your thoughts, and uh, hopefully we'll do this some other time. Uh, and, of course, I know Austin has a thing or two to say. Uh, quickly, you do that before we leave. Uh, what do you think uh, yeah. Zichenko brings? I was just smiling that I, I'm sitting with expectant Arsenal fans. They're loving their signings and they're believing that it will be a good season. That's such a good signing. You guys have got Gabriel Jesus also. So uh, let's wait for the season to begin. All right. We can't wait. All right. That's the show today. Well, we thank you for allowing us into your homes without knocking on the door. As to say, it's a privilege we will never take for granted. Enjoy your weekend. you see us again next week. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye now. That's the show in London. I'm Austin O'Connor. And in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now.